Hello and welcome back to Run the Atlas. Today I'm talking about a very special region of Mexico, Puebla, and the things you need to know before visiting here. I just returned from a trip to Puebla and I learned so many things that I wish I knew before visiting, so be sure to stay tuned to the end to capture all of the details. And if you're from Puebla, give us a shout out in the comments below and let us know your favorite things about your city. So first of all, Puebla. Why visit Puebla? Puebla has just a little bit of everything that's special about Mexico, from the pyramids to the volcanoes to the archaeological sites, and of course, the cuisine. This is a place you visit when you're interested in history, culture, and food. But let's start with getting there. So you can definitely do a day trip here, but I recommend staying overnight so that you can really absorb the culture and take some of the side trips, because there's many wonderful side trips from Puebla. There are direct flights here from Tijuana Airport and various other parts of Mexico. You can fly into Puebla's airport. We took a Volaris flight, so definitely be sure to check for some of the cheap flights on Volaris and check in ahead of time on Volaris to make sure you secure your seat. That's something we learned. There's no need for a car rental here. When you get here, everything is really accessible right in the historic core. So be sure to stay in the historic core. Look how well marked this city is. Speaking of places to stay, there's a number of hostels and there's really beautiful boutique hotels. We stayed at one called Hotel La Purificadora. This is a beautiful boutique hotel. It really kind of immerses you into the culture because it's very colorful and there's a lot of unique details. It's built into the historic walls. And there's also a number of hostels that we passed by that looked really cool too. So if you're on a budget or you're traveling with your friends, be sure to check those out. One that I wrote down that looked really cool was called Casa Pepe Boutique Hotel, and it's really well situated in the historic core. So some unique features of Puebla, the altitude is really high. So it's about 7,000 feet high. And you'll definitely feel it if you're walking around, you'll feel a little bit out of breath. And if you're doing a lot of activity, you'll definitely feel like you need more hydration than normal. So be sure to acclimatize a little bit before doing any physical activities. One of the main reasons why we visited Puebla is because of the landscapes. They're really beautiful. And you can see a volcano called Volcano Popo or Popocatepetl. I'm gonna put the actual pronunciation here. Popocatepetl. And it's so beautiful, it gives it a majestic quality seeing it in the distance and framed by churches in front. But sometimes you can't see the volcano. It's sometimes obscured by fog or smog or clouds. So be sure to stay a few days in Puebla so that you can make sure you see the volcano. The time to visit would be winter or fall spring and summer can get very hot so it's something to note and also while we were there in february the weather changed dramatically from day to night so daytime it was like summertime weather and then nighttime people were wearing jackets and speaking of dress people dress more conservatively here there's a lot of churches it's much more of a religious scene so i would definitely recommend covering up a little bit more than your usual beach locations in mexico as for the culture there are some unique things that we noticed puebla doesn't have like the kind of mexican party scene that you see in like cancun or Mazatlan or Cabo, it's more of a subdued culture, more chill. There are a lot of religious festivities. This is a city known for its 365 churches. That's actually kind of a misnomer. There aren't exactly 365, but someone in the past counted all the spires and they were like, how many do you think there are? There must be 365 for every day of the year, but there are a lot. And because of that, you'll see a lot of religious ceremonies. If you're here on a Sunday, you'll likely see one. So the city is also much more chill than Mexico City. There's not as much traffic, which I really appreciated. It's easier to get around and you can definitely get around by foot. There are some wealthier areas too, which I was really surprised. There are some areas within a golf course and a country club where there's multi-million dollar homes. 
it's interesting to see the spectrum of affluence in Puebla and also it's very safe at night. I feel like this is really special to be walking around a historic district like this at night and it's like you have the whole place to yourself. So you can get an amazing Michelin star quality dinner here for about $30 per person. And that will include an entree, an appetizer, a drink, and a dessert. I was really surprised to see how artistic the food is here. Just the presentation is really beyond anything I've seen. There are some really unique dishes here. So for street food, you can try the chapulines. These are crickets and they are boiled and fried and sometimes covered in different spices and they are really high in protein. And you'll even see them on pizza. Next is polke. This is a hugely popular drink. It is a fermented drink, but it's very low in the alcohol. It's kind of similar to a kombucha, but is made from an agave. So it has kind of like a stickiness almost to it, which is an interesting consistency and might take some getting used to. It has a lot of medicinal qualities. And when you drink it, they actually say buen provecho instead of salud because it's considered a food. Some dishes that you definitely want to try, number one is the mole poblano. The mole here is out of this world. It is so savory and so complex. The pollo adobo is also really good if you're into something a little bit more chile based. One of the most famous dishes that is synonymous with Puebla is the Chilean nogada. And I'm gonna put a photo right here of what that looks like. And you can see the beautiful pomegranates on top. The thing to note about this dish is that it is only available around September time when the ingredients are in season. Our guide was saying that a lot of restaurants end up freezing many of the ingredients so it doesn't taste as good as the hype says it is. So if you want to try a really good chile and nogada, come here in September. There are also a lot of unique ice creams that we noticed, especially around a town called Atixlo. And so we noticed ice cream flavors such as vapor rub and cedar. <sighs> We just got vapor rub and cedar ice cream. I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> and the vapor rub actually kind of had that like numbing quality, but it's made out of a plant. So if you're interested in trying something really unique, this is the place. For sites, you definitely want to take a side trip to Cantona if you're interested in Mexican archaeology and the Mesoamerican culture. This site is massive and there's hardly anybody there and you can see the pyramids and the sacrificial areas there's a lot of different paths that lead throughout the site and there's many different ball courts over 20 ball courts and there's actually a museum on site too so you can see some of the pottery and the obsidian tools that they uncovered during this time period and it's amazing to see that they are almost like they had just been created yesterday but they are thousands of years old one of the most interesting side trips that we took was to Cholula. Cholula, like the salsa, but not, as, not associated with the salsa. So Cholula has a beautiful church that's situated on the largest pyramid. The pyramid actually has not been fully excavated or uncovered, which is really interesting. And that's because it would ruin the church on top, which is a 16th century church built by the Spanish. So the church on top you climb up a huge ramp to get to it, and it's the church that you see as the icon of Puebla. It's framed with Volcano Popo in the background, and it is absolutely gorgeous. The view from up above is also just extremely expansive. There are some tunnels underneath the pyramid from when an archaeologist was trying to excavate and learn about the, the construct of the pyramid. And the tunnels were closed during our visit, but they were said to be very creepy. So if you're interested in doing something unique, check out the tunnels when they are open. If you're looking for something free to do in Puebla, check out Museo Amparo. Now this museum is free entry and it has a beautiful terrace. So aside from the collection of beautiful ancient treasures, check out the terrace, get a coffee up there and check out the beautiful surroundings of Puebla. 
This is talking about all the different churches that you can see from up here. A lot of them are from the early 1700s. You can just see all of the spires. Let's see if you can count 365 churches. So Mexico is known for their Pueblos Magicos. These are magical towns and they're noted for their unique culture, artisan crafts, their history and their traditions. And Puebla has nine of these Pueblos Magicos. They're really beautiful to walk around. And in Puebla, they're known for their artisan craft called Talaveras, and these are tiles. So along the facades of the buildings, you notice many different unique tiles and beautiful ceramic work. And I was photographing the different patterns and some of them are made from natural colors. You can see the buildings kind of glisten at night. And the tiles actually served a purpose because back in the day, they were used for cooking. When they were cooking mole, the tiles were really easy to clean after preparing food. And so they decided to extend the use to the facades of buildings to also clean them as well and make it much more beautiful. So it really adds a special quality to this town, it's something I haven't seen in other parts of Mexico. I really enjoyed exploring Puebla. It wasn't quite as touristic as other parts of Mexico. I felt like I was immersed in the culture I would love to know what your favorite things are about Puebla and if you have a trip coming up, put a comment down below and I'll be sure to respond with some recommendations. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe for more travel videos.